Hi guys, Bill Davina team here and uh, I want to talk about this E46 race car of ours. Is this E46 platform the ultimate budget race car? We've got this car now to a point we're exceptionally happy and I must say I think uh, we'd be hard pressed to find a better car for building a race car out of on a budget than E46. One of the main reasons is that this car is cheap, you can pick them up all over the world but certainly here down in South Africa as well at, at pretty reasonable prices though good clean models are now starting to tick up in price and there is starting to be a very big range in quality so you've got some really good well looked after well maintained uh, cars and then on the other end of the spectrum you've got some really ropey stuff which is which is quite horrendous but nevertheless they are inherently affordable importantly though the development is pretty darn easy um, there's a plethora of information out there on these cars um, it's been done there are many race series worldwide that, that take advantage of this of these cars so there's a lot of stuff on the web there's a lot of stuff in your, in your local racing club which will guide your guide, guide you along the path of, of your first steps to just getting a good functional and, and relatively well thought of uh, race car parts avail availability is also fantastic i mean you can't build a car if you can't get your hands on a decent set of coilovers um, if you've got issues with with strange wheel sizes and, and stuff like that um, you can get bits for the E46 platform without without any major major issues. One of the questions, of course, is which platform do you go for? Do you go for uh, you know the ultimate in terms of performance, which would have to be the M, or do you stick with good old honest 330, which again are a lot cheaper than than, a, than an M3 would be, um, and of course has at least got some decent power, unlike the smaller engine siblings. And really, our our um, feeling is that in terms of Yes, we're giving up some power to the end, but the maintainability, the cost of rebuilding this motor if something goes wrong, um, is, is a fraction of what it costs to rebuild an M motor. And don't forget that M motor is heavy, it's a cast iron lump. So yes, there's massive power, but it comes at the expense of having a huge amount of weight over that front axle, and that certainly doesn't help suspension and setup. This motor is ultimately incredibly strong and reliable. When we first started racing this this car, we had 330,000 kilometers on the on the engine. Um, and in fact, the only reason it, it went through a rebuild is because we were trying to chase down a cooling issue. Uh, there are many cars out there that are running this kind of mileage. There's no reason that you can't take something with 400,000 kilometers on the clock, never been open. Make sure that the cooling system is, is all you know strapped up and together. Make sure you change your oil regularly. Get out there and race with the car. If you do happen to hurt your motor, you've got a couple of options. You can rebuild it, or you can hop off to the scrapyard, the breaker's yard, pick yourself up a new motor, bang it in, and off you go. So, yeah, I've got to say, this thing is probably the best budget race car. But Nick has started to fight me a little bit over about the sharing, and we're now at the point where we probably need to be getting another one. So, are we going to go on the hunt for another E46 and do another budget build? build ourselves another fantastic E46 race car? All information seems to suggest that that's the smart way to do it. Or is it? Well, that's an idea. Nobody seems to want the E90. And of course we want to do everything that nobody else does, so um, maybe we'll give this a bash. Of course if you're going to look at an E90, you've got to take into account the fact that even the 330, which is also a 3 litre motor, but it's got the N52 engine, it's 190 kilowatts versus 170, so we've got 20 extra kilowatts to play with, but it is a significantly heavier car, so how do the two stack up? It actually turns out it's about 125 kilos heavier than the E46, but those extra 20 kilowatts actually make it count, and when you look at power to weight ratio of a stock car, we're still up on the E90 at 2.5%, but importantly that engine is a good 10 kilos at least depending on what data you look at than the m54 motor and that's important we've got those additional or fewer 10 kilos up over the front axle so that should hopefully help us together with the overall dynamics which we would expect to be improved on the e90 as far as the rest of the car is considered it is concerned it's going to be quite interesting trying to get this to where we need it to go on that budget that we spoke about because unlike the E46 parts are not as easily available.
Uh, we've got all the bloody techno, technical and electronic gadgetry inside here, which will complain as soon as we start to rip things out of the car. And it's going to really protest when we start to amputate bits and pieces of the car. So coding those options out to make sure that the car is happy um, is, is going to be a little bit of fun. We managed to pick this car up at a pretty good price. And what attracted us to the car was that it is particularly ropey from a bodywork point of view. You may not be able to pick it up here, but it does have hail damage. The paint is absolutely shocking. It's full of scratches and scrapes. Um, you know, this is something which would not be able to be restored just with some, with some paint correction. It would require a lot of paint work. Um, there was some pretty major oil leak. But once we had a look at the, at the books, and this car did actually come with a full service history, this has had all of its services. It's only got 200,000 kilometers or 216,000 kilometers on the clock. Um, it's poverty spec. We don't have that stupid sunroof hole in the middle of the roof, which you need to get rid of. It doesn't even have park distance control. It's got nothing, no iDrive, none of those things. So this is, this is about the most base spec car you can get, with the exception of the fact that it does have the M Sport pack. Um, obviously the sport suspension and the rims are of no use to us, they're going to go into fin. Um, but we do certainly prefer the sport pack bumpers um, over the standard uh, version. This bumper as it happens is actually broken, it's got a great big crack over there. But we'll fix that after all, it is a racing car. So, next steps, we've now got the car um, completely sorted from a mechanical point of view. We spent a little bit of time and money making sure that the engine is right, good and solid. Got those oil leaks sorted out, replaced valve cover gasket, oil filter housing gasket, oil cooler gasket. We've got new vanilla solenoids in there, a full set of new coils, brand new radiator because the other one popped. A um, couple of other bits and pieces and the motor is uh, ticking like a sewing machine. Um, while, while I had the valve cover off incidentally, I did have a look at the um, underneath the uh, number one um, intake uh, cam uh, cap, bearing cap for that notorious cam wear ledge wear or ledge wear and uh, it's absolutely clean there's no problem at all there was very little varnish inside so we're very confident we've got a great motor here we've got a great gearbox the e90 gearbox is really really precise and notchy unlike the e46 which suffers from that sloppiness with the d10 pins um, so we think the powertrain is going to be pretty darn good so we're looking forward to getting the weight out of this getting a set of coilovers on here um, and getting a cage in it and, and getting it ready to race so let's see can the E90 really compete with the E46 as the next ultimate budget race car?